Hello and welcome to my video about how to fit a FPV pan and tilt gimbal to the back of a Radiomaster TX16S. The end result is that we will end up with the pan and tilt gimbal fitted into a custom printed uh, molded uh, grip along with a push to make momentary switch on the other side of the handset. This modification does include taking the two halves of the radio apart. Uh, there are four screws in the back and two screws in the top and then just take the side panels off it but um, I'm pretty much guessing that if you're here watching this video you've probably already done it or you're already fairly clued up on how to do that. I first came up with this idea uh, four or five years ago on my old Turnigy 9X handset um, decided that I needed to use a pan and tilt feature that I didn't want to use the two potentiometers for um, so I ended up doing a similar idea to what you're about to see now but in a much basic format and of course this is before I was into 3D printing so I had no fancy moulds, no fancy sort of designs for that, it was just a case of bolted on and wired up. We're going to follow the same principle now but because the Radio Master TX16S actually supports adding additional hardware that's the route that we're going to go down now. So by using the designs released onto Thingiverse by Radio Master for the rear grip uh, I took that design and just slightly modified it to accommodate the, uh, the, the pan and tilt gimbal. So here's a picture of the pan and tilt gimbal now. Uh, it's for an Arduino, it's based on a PlayStation 1 or an Xbox 1, anything like that really. Um, the link for which will be added onto the bottom of this video down in the description. So if we now turn the pan and tilt gimbal itself to the right, so that the legs, the feet, the spiky bits are facing to the right, uh, you'll notice, according to this picture, that I've cut one of the little surface mounted tracks, the copper tracks actually on the PCB itself. Uh, the reason for this is it's for the voltage reference for uh, the Y-axis. Because each port, SI and SJ, are from the Radio Master, provide their own 5 volt supply, whereas this board only allows for a common 5 volt supply, what we want to be able to do is, is sort of facilitate the use of the two 5 volts um, reference voltages for this gimbal. Next thing you want to do is follow the link in the description below to uh, my Thingiverse profile, download this file, print it. Uh, there's some print settings actually on the Thingiverse um, page itself to sort of tell you which way I think is probably the best way to print that, but your printer is different to my printer, so each to their own, just sort of print it, make sure it's a good fit, um, and then we'll go from there. Next thing you want to do is buy yourself two JST 1.25mm 5-pin plugs with some wires. Um, ideally, these want to be about 14 centimeters long. I found that that was the best length that allowed you to assemble and disassemble the two halves together of the radio but also not be an excessive amount of wire that it would keep getting trapped in stuff if you um, you know if you weren't very careful with putting it back together and what have you. Here's an excellent and highly technical drawing that I did in paint uh, just that's just about the limit of my computer skills really but uh, the information is accurate it's informative um, you might want to pause the video at this point for some time perhaps print that off or something don't know um, but uh, like I said, all the information is accurate to there. And if you, if you wire up all your bits and pieces according to this information, uh, it'll be A, identical to mine, which I know works, and B, yours will also work as well, as effectively as mine does. When I first considered sort of doing this project to my new Radio Master TX16S, I um, took it apart uh, to sort of figure out whether I could wire it up in the same way that I'd wired up my old Turnigy 9X. Um, by using a um, double pole, double throw switch, I could take the wiring from the signal wires that used to go to the potentiometers and then cut it and then sort of switch it over to the pan and tilt for the FPV and then switch it back again afterwards for another use. But upon closer inspection, I found two unused ports on the board of the Radio Master and I kind of wondered whether they would be for additional hardware. So I actually emailed Radio Master themselves and I was really surprised, pleasantly surprised, at how helpful they were. They sent me this picture uh, and they were really sort of um, quite excited about me sort of doing this project. They were really sort of forward with the information and uh, I just thought it was a refreshing change for a manufacturer to be so open and so helpful with um, what's essentially product information, I suppose. So this is an example of uh, where my wires go to on the back of the pan and tilt gimbal. Uh, your wires will also go here at the same places. Um, however, I don't pay any attention to the colours because I've just used random bits of wire, so the colours don't correlate to anything. But it's just, it just gives you an idea of, of where you know, the wires actually get soldered to. Um, if you notice on the left-hand side, as you're looking at that picture, a lot of the 
um, solder joints have to be slightly filed down just to be able to actually fit into the 3D printed um, grip that I've modified because I wanted want it to be as low profile as possible. Uh, so that, that was just something that I had to do in order to uh, sort of achieve that. So for this next bit, if you put a piece of masking tape exactly where I'd put it there and then just dry fit your grip without the um, joystick just to make sure that it fits, just draw a line around it, whatever. You can also at this stage drill your um, three millimeter holes that go into the back of the unit, back of the uh, the Radio Master sort of handset through the 3D printed mount. But also if you take note of the measurements in here, um, you, need, you need to trim out a little piece that's five millimeters wide by 33 millimeters long. That's just a relief for the wires to sort of pass through into the back of the actual radio itself. I do just want to quickly say at this point, I'm not proud of the state of that hole. I had to do it with a hot knife. Uh, it was like midnight and the trouble is my hobby prevention officer hits the roof if I key up a Dremel multi-tool any time after nine o'clock at night. She does not like that. So at this stage we can now fit the um, joystick into the actual 3D printed mount that just sits in there. Gently work on your actual 3D printed grip um, into the actual back of the handset itself. It's a bit tricky, you have to file little bits here and there, the, the print isn't you know, amazing, it's not accurate. I think the, the original STL file was designed to be injection moulded so in order to get a 3D printed part to fit you need to work it a little bit. But you can also put your two bolts, your two M3 bolts um, there they are M3 by 10 millimeter long. You'll see a picture just shortly of the other side of it um, with the little M3 nuts. Um, but this can get tightened up now and put into position. And this is what the inside of the radio looks like once the two M3 by 10 millimeter bolts have passed through the 3D print, through the joystick, and actually through the casing of the radio itself. Um, top tip: what I would do is there's not enough room on those 10 mil bolts to put a nylock nut. But what I'd be tempted to do is put a little bit of either super glue or I use a Loctite product on the thread as you wind up that um, little uh, M3 nut. I wouldn't go crazy on it because you don't want to split the print the other side, but nevertheless you don't want it popping off. And then because it's metal, it's conductive, it can touch the circuit board, it could cause all manner of nightmare things. Um, but just give it a gentle nip up with some of that Loctite stuff and then that's it, you never have to sort of touch it again. The wires just pass through that little relief that we cut in the actual back of the unit itself. Uh, you can't see that cut from the other side now once the 3D printed part's actually fitted, so it does look really quite smart. Okay, so to fit the momentary switch, if we place a piece of masking tape where I've placed it just here, and then the red line on there is obviously where the rubber ends and the plastic starts, take that as your outer extremity on the one side, and then the actual casing where your a radio unit would fit on the left hand side is, is the inner extremity. The centre of that is 7mm between the two, it's 14mm wide. That is where you want to drill a pilot hole for your uh, momentary switch. Once your pilot hole's drilled, if you enlarge it up to 8mm, as shown in the picture here, you're ready to put the switch in. Here's a picture from the inside of the radio with the 8mm momentary switch fitted. All I've done here is once I've soldered the wires on, uh, just put a little bit of heat shrink over them just to protect the metal terminals. Here's another look at the wiring information that relates to the momentary switch as well as the actual uh, joystick itself. Uh, just another opportunity to give it a quick pause and just go over any information that you may have missed earlier. Okay, so with the grip fitted, uh, all the wires soldered onto the actual um, joystick itself and the momentary switch as well as that fitted, this is pretty much what the wiring should look like, um, ready to mate the two parts of the controller together. Okay, so once we've done all that, if we reassemble the radio uh, and switch it back on, and now what we need to do is define the switches in OpenTX. By holding down the Sys button or System button, if you bring up the main menu across the top and then scroll across until you hit Hardware. Then scroll down to EX1 and EX2. If you now scroll through the menu options to make the radio uh, firmware match the settings pictured here, um, then that's the joystick x-axis and y-axis setup. Okay, once you've done that, if you scroll further down to SI and SJ, now what we're going to do is set up the two momentary switches. Now, SI, uh, you'll see that the I've called the switch PSS, that's for PlayStation Switch, so that I know that the momentary switch on the actual pan and tilt gimbal, that relates to SI. 
Also on SJ, I've named the switch PTM, as in push to make switch. So that's the other momentary switch that we've also installed. It's worth mentioning at this point that SI and SJ in the hardware are actually back to front to how they're defined in the firmware. So if you have wired it up according to this video and then defined them according to this video with the firmware just here, it will be correct. It is actually back to front, but don't panic. Just follow this video. Make sure that you've wired it up correctly according to the information I've already given you and then define them correctly according to this information and you won't, you won't have gone wrong with it. And finally here we can see a quick video of it actually working, panning and tilting. Uh, so if you've done everything correctly, then yours will do exactly this. Thanks for watching.